Hi and welcome to the Power Egg YouTube channel. In this video we are going to focus on Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse medallion architecture between the bronze and silver layer transformation where we are going to denormalize a snowflake schema into a star schema. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe for more videos. Okay, so here a view from Power BI on the data model. Uh, for simplification reasons and because there's a better overview, we can see that the dimension product table um, has two other dimension tables related to it, the dim sub product subcategory table and the dimension product category table. However, because there is uh, three steps from the fact table um, going down the road of the product hierarchy, uh, we have a snowflake schema and we want to denormalize this. That means we want to create um, to merge all the three tables, the ones marked in red with the dim dimension product with the dim dimension product table um, in order to simplify the model. This would be the result we would have uh, once we're finished. We're going to have a single product table di directly related to the fact sales tables without any other tables um, related to, to the product table. There are a few limitations and benefits to this transformation. The limitations are that it can lead to some data redundancy during the transformation. And it also could be more difficult as the um, model is um, more difficult to maintain in terms of data integrity and data consistency and because we are merging all the tables and we have a lot of columns in the final table rather than having smaller multiples of tables that we can manage better. However, there also are some benefits. This is why we're doing this. We have a simplified query navigation and the complexity of the data model in general is simplified. And finally, and most importantly, we should have better query performance. This is the process we're going to do. Uh, we are extracting the data. In my case, I have CSV files and I'm loading them into the bronze layer lake house um, in the medallion architecture. So the medallion architecture is based on bronze, silver and gold layers that are each sitting in different workspaces dedicated to each layer. And then finally, in the silver workspace, we're going to transform the data using a Microsoft Fabric notebook with PySpark. Let's get to the code. Thank you very much. Okay, so straight into Microsoft Fabric, I'm in the Contoso Bronze workspace where I have the bronze layer of my lake house data, which is the raw data without any transformation whatsoever. So let me go into the Contoso Bronze lake house. And as you can see, I have a lot of data here, parquet files. However, I've also created a subfolder which holds the CSV files we're going to use. You can see here we have the three product tables that we're going to combine. And then finally, we have the date dimension table and the fact sales CSV tables with, for which, um, with which we are going to create the star schema. So the first step we would have to do is to go to the silver layer um, lake house. So right now I am in the Contoso silver layer and I'm going to click on the or open the lake house, the silver lake house I created for denormalizing the data. As you can see, there aren't any delta tables, neither are there any files in this lake house. Uh, so what we will do is we will click on open notebook, create a new notebook. And in this notebook, we are going to just delete these comments that we have, and I'm going to paste the code that we are going to use. Uh, so let me quickly get into it. The enable V order and automatic Delta optimization, right? Are optimization um, configurations that will um, increase the performance or improve the performance doing read write operations. Then we have the three CSV files we are reading. I have the option header true, as you can see here. Uh, because I have headers in my CSV files and we're also using semicolon as a delimiter. When I exported the CSV files from the SQL server uh, using SQL Server Management Studio, I noticed that there are some commas between some string um, fields in, in, some, in some string columns that are separated by commas. So therefore we are using the semicolon delimiter and we need to mention this here. And then I'm inferring the schema um, out of, out of um, comfort. However, um, this, this does not work properly because the CSV files does not have the right schema to begin with. So essentially, in the end, we would have to improve the schema and, and dedicate some data types for the schema itself. Uh, the next step is that the key columns are all uh, formatted as integers. We are going to do this manually here. 
um, with the data with each data frame uh, using the the key columns that we have and we're casting them as integers to make sure that when we do the join operations uh, we don't have any different kinds of data types data types then I add a prefix to the columns for certain uh, tables so the product category category key table that I'm going to join onto the product sub subcategory um, table the reason I'm um, adding prefixes to, to the columns in this table is just to keep track of where the columns come from. Uh, we're using a loop here with an if statement that the product category key um, column should not be renamed because we need to have identical names for the two columns for the join operation. Next, we are doing the same thing with the subcategory table. I call this prefix two. And again, we have the loop. However, this time we have two columns that I don't want to um, have the prefix added to. This is the product subcategory key and the product category key key column. And then I'm specifying in, in each, uh, after each loop for the prefix, I'm spe specifying um, what columns I want um, for the table join going forward. So in the product category table, I just want three columns, the name, the label, and the key. And for the subcategory table, I want the product category key, subcategory key, and then the label and the name as well with the prefix on these ones. Then we create the join, join data frame, um, data frame. So this is a data frame with the join operation that we're, we can use further down to down, down words of the code. And as you can see here, uh, we are referring to the DF category data frame, which is the one we defined earlier where, where the CSV is simply loaded into. Um, however, we are selecting the join columns category, the, uh, all, all of the columns from the join columns category, um, jo join columns underscore cat for category, which we specified earlier here as a data frame where we specified as well what columns we want with the prefix. And then we are joining this on the subcategory table. Again, a similar thing. I'm selecting all the columns I want from uh, the specified data frame earlier. And we're joining on the category key table, uh, category key column, and we're using a left outer join. And from there, we are creating another data frame uh, where we use the product table and we join the product subcategory. Um, we join the previous data frame where we join the other two tables onto this new one using the product subcategory subcategory key column, also using a left outer join. Then I'm adding a timestamp. This is just for um, governance purposes. And of course, here uh, I have a commented out code that um, will show us what the result is. So let's quickly execute this. I'm going to comment out the part that writes the Delta table into a specified location in the Silver um, Lake House. I'm going to execute the show, um, the data frame two, the join data frame two, the final one. And I'm going to uh, show this in Pandas because I prefer the way it is displayed. Um, rather than just writing join df um, dot show and brackets open close. So this will execute now and we can see here that this, this looks fine. Uh, I can tell you now that the some of the columns are still um, in the wrong data type. So class ID, style ID, I think they are uh, um, managed as strings because I inferred the, the schema from the CSV files and in the CSV files they are, are, are um, formatted as strings, which is incorrect. We should we should format this further down. But um, if we have a look here at the last comment, it says the next step would be to limit the columns as needed to improve the query performance. So right here we have around 37 columns. We would have to reduce this for better performance as well and, and to make sure we only have what we need, perhaps in the gold layer later on. And um, then we would also have to define the data types throughout formatting. So let's go ahead and write this delta table. So I'm going to comment out the uh, show show the table the data frame. And I'm going to uncomment the part that actually writes the delta table into the location. So as you can see here, 
Uh, this is the Contoso Silver workspace we are writing the table to. And this is in the Lake House Silver Star Schema. This is the name of the Lake House. And then we have um, the tables uh, section of that Lake House. And we're going to write this table as um, dimension product. Okay, so this has succeeded now. We can open this up, we can check. So let's go into the Silver Lake House and have a look. Okay, I'm now in the uh, Contoso Silver workspace. So let me open up the Lake House and the dimension product table should be here, which will open in a few seconds. And of course, to do the star schema, we also need the uh, fact sales table and the dimension date table. So let's add those as well. So to do this, we just have to go to edit and add another code cell to the bottom of the previous one. And I'm going to again add the optimization settings and uh, read the CSV files into the data frame. So we have DF date and we have DF sales. And then as you can see here, again, I have the uh, show the, the data frames um, in, in the table form that is that is um, um, that I like in pandas, but um, I'm going to skip this. I'm simply going to write the table. So we have here this one called dimension date. It says towards the end of the code what the name is uh, of the path where we can dedicate a name to the delta table. And then we have also fact sales. It's important that in PySpark we define the format and um, we can use the override function. Uh, something I, no I noticed is when you use override um, and the schema changes in your code, uh, it will not work because the previous write of the delta table has a specified schema. So you would have to drop that table um, and create a new schema for the new schema that you specified in your code. So let's execute this. I'm writing this the first time, so we won't have this problem. This should be fairly quick as well. <clears throat> so let's open this up. We have um, all the process steps running. And as you can see, uh, all jobs so far succeeded. And this should be the last one, I think. And once this is done, we will go back to the Silver Lake House and we're going to create the star schema. OK, so this is done. Uh, let's go back to the Silver Lake House and have a look at what we created. OK, I'm in the Silver Lake House, so I'm going to refresh the Silver Lake House to see the new tables. And as you can see, we have the fact and the dimension date table. This is great. So now we can go ahead and create that star schema. Let's quickly have a look at the product table that we initially um, denormalized, as you can see here. Um, OK, there are 38 columns, uh, including the timestamp. And um, here, for example, the class ID is uh, formatted in data type string. This is not correct. We would have to optimize this further. OK, so to, to create the star schema, we would have to switch between the lake house and um, to the SQL um, analytics endpoint. So I'm going to click on here, the analytics endpoint, and we should have all the delta tables if everything went well. These are managed delta tables. So if we would have external data delta tables, they would not turn up in the endpoint. Um, uh, at least at the moment, th this is this is kind of tricky. So I, I always use the manage tables. And if we click on the reporting part, um, we can create a new semantic models. Now I can model the data in the endpoint itself. Um, but I want to query this with Power BI from a semantic model. And uh, if I model the data here in the endpoint, and then I create a semantic model, it will not automatically inherit the relationship. And I do not want to manage the default semantic model because um, for governance purposes, I want a separate semantic model. So let's just click on new semantic model. It will ask us what tables we want and the name of the semantic model. Um, so we're going to write uh, semantic underscore denormalized underscore products. And um, this should work. By the way, if you are in the SQL endpoint and you have previously uh, uh, altered the default semantic model or anything like this, and then you want to do another operation for creating a new semantic model, um, it is better to refresh the page um, because uh, I, I, I tend to get an error when I try to do two operations um, consecutively. 
and, th and this way, because we are now doing this the first time, it should work without any problems. Um, so I, I click confirm. So let's wait for this to load. And then we should have our semantic model. And uh, this is in the silver workspace. So it will be in the same workspace we are working in. So I'm going to click on the silver workspace and we should have the sem semantic denormalized products um, semantic model. So I'm going to click on here. And now with the new Power BI functionalities, we can open this data model on the web browser, which is great. So we're going to open this data model and now we can actually create the star schema that we want. So all we have to do is create the relationships and between the dim product and the fact table, I'm going to use product key. So I'm going to drag and drop the product key columns on top of each other. It's going to ask what kind of cardinality I want between the relationship. Many to one is perfectly fine. And I want the cross filter direction to be single. I'm going to do the same thing for the dimension date table with the same settings. So I'm going to use date key and date key should be up here for the fact table. So I'm going to drag and drop date key on top of each other. Click OK again, and it should create the relationship. From here, we can create a new report in the web browser. However, this has some limitations in terms of settings, functionalities, and so on. Uh, so my preference is to do this in Power BI Desktop further down the road. Um, but that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and please subscribe for more.